Namaskar, Namaskar, Namaskar. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We were just having a little bit of an issue with live streaming on LinkedIn. We've been uh, we've been live for a bit. We've been live for two minutes. So therefore, people who are on Facebook, people on Periscope, uh, people on Twitch, this is the first time that we are live with Living Forward on Twitch too. And people on dear friends on YouTube who are joining us. Uh, so uh, welcome, LinkedIn. Uh, we managed to get you on uh, to the season of hope. Yes, this is the season of hope. I'm so happy to see you all. Different time zones, same day. So yes, this is a Sunday morning here in India. And uh, a few of you have been kind enough to wake up so early on a Sunday morning and uh, be here with us. And there are people from different parts of Namaskar, Namaskar, people from different parts. Thank you so much from different uh, parts of the world who are joining in in this Living Forward conversation. First, to let you know a little bit about who we are. So at Avid Minor, we believe that you and I are the change agent that we really wish our life to have. And therefore, we create, uh, we, we create conversations which allow people and organizations to think and, and look at themselves as a source of whatever change we want. So in that same spirit for us, this is the season of hope. Yes, the season is typically defined by people who say that it, it's winter, so therefore it's, it's winter. It's cold, it's winter. It's raining, it's monsoon. Uh, there are some fireworks on, so there is festivity. For us, this season needs hope from you and me. So therefore, we have declared this as the season of hope. And it's my absolute pleasure during this season of hope to welcome Shantanu Sen Gupta, Managing Director, EBS. Uh, consumer banking here with me on Living Forward. Swagat hai, swagat hai, swagat hai, Shantanu. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashish. And it's an absolute privilege and a pleasure to be part of this whole, uh, you know, conversation about Living Forward and, and the season of hope. I quite like that, that phrase. Thank you very much. Yes. yes. And essentially, uh, 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 Shantanu, we all know that we are going through stuff in this period. All right. And uh, we also know that uh, uh, humanity as a whole has gone through uh, stuff, oh, you know, over the eons that we have been in existence, except that now with the media really present, we are aware of how much is going on. And somehow it kind of also, you know, it, it, it kind of sucks us, it kind of draws us down. So the idea of living forward is that uh, with, with amazing people like you in company, uh, we will talk about how are we going to be living forward in this moment. All right. So I'm sure. so very happy that you accepted my invite to be here. Grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much. So the conversation began between you and me in. Uh, so thanks to Evernote, I found the notes, uh, June 2018. And you're the first banker I ever had ever met who had said this uh, in, a, uh, in a conversation. And we were curating for an event for you. And you said uh, the DBS Bank is encouraging people not to visit the branch. I said, really? I said, what is that? And that was the first time I'd ever heard this. And you went on to share that how you are making it completely digitally available. You've been ahead of the curve. No, I think we have been very fortunate. Uh, you know, the fact that it all started with an idea. It all started mm. with an experiment that uh, should we try becoming a bank which is completely digital which is uh, you know the, the whole idea behind that was to make it simple for customers and you see india is a it's, it's our country is a beautiful but massive country huge right and to cover the entire you know the, the the length and breadth of the country through physical infrastructure is quite difficult mm -hmm. so the thinking that we had was how can we use technology how can we make technology work for people and make it simple and easy and make make available things that customers actually look forward to, which are essential, by the way, you know, managing your money, dealing with money is essential part of your life, right? But having to go to a branch, the logistics around it, the traffic, the paper, the wait time, the, we said, why can't we solve all these problems? And we were very fortunate that at that point in time, the government came up with this whole digital stack in India where, you know, it tried to uh, really convert the whole ecosystem from being a physical environment to a digital environment. And I'm sure 
the whole Aadhaar, all of us know about Aadhaar and how you can use Aadhaar as a, as a core mechanism to do a lot of transactions. So that's what we tried doing at that point in time. So when we spoke about two, two and a half years back, we were thinking on those, we launched up in the, India's first digital bank and you know there was a lot of skepticism that will it really work in India? Yes, because, yeah. So, I mean, this whole concept that, uh, you know, our, our belief was live more, bank less. And that's, that's, that's what we've always followed. Live more, bank less. As a bank, when we say live more, and bank less, people are confused and people are not, not just confused, but they are curious. Why would it be, uh, why would a bank say bank less? But the whole idea behind this was that can you create a, a bank where it's intelligent enough to save time for you? And when it saves time for you, it gives you more time in your hand. And when it gives you more time in your hand, you live more, right? So we said, yes, we will go down that path. We will say that because we believe in that, that we will try and help you bank less, which is, you know, do all your the time spent to do your banking. Take that out. We give that chunk back to you and say, live more, live your life. more." So that's how it started. Journey. Interestingly, interesting. So so here is a question, you know, and, and I want you to take on the mindset. Now, imagine you have an idea which which makes a lot of sense to me now. Uh, in fact, when you shared with me for the first time, I was one of the skeptics thinking that how, I mean, like, how can, or, or, or why, why would I? Okay. So I, I was also there. So my question to you is that Shantanu coming up with an idea in business, you know, especially something which, which may be even slightly ahead of the curve. How do you, uh, because for you, you are selling that idea to a customer and there is skepticism there. How does a professional deal with skepticism in the buyer's mind? That's a lovely question, Ashish. So for us, the way we always thought was think of the buyer. I mean, think of our customer. The whole idea was to serve and serve well. If you think about this entire journey and you think about the bank, then probably you're missing the plot. But if you start thinking from a customer perspective and say that, okay, how can I make Ashish's life better? How can I make it easier for him? How can I, you know, demystify banking? How can I simplify the whole whole experience by using technology? When we started thinking about you as a customer, the despite the skepticism outside, it became easier for us because we weren't thinking about us. We were thinking about how we can serve you better, how we can make it easier for you. So when we started this journey, and even today, while we launched ahead of all the other banks, the, the, the way we want to step ahead, keep us keep a step ahead of others is to be able to continuously simplify our customers' life. So it's yeah, not that I will I, I will come to that, Chandra. But you know, I want to pick your brain on this particular one. And that's because that's going into this period, you see, in this period that we are, each one of us is actually, you know, filled with ideas because we clearly know that this period needs new ideas from each one of us. So we are clear on that. Okay. So each one of us, the professionals who are watching, we are all clear that this period needs new ideas. It, it needs a new version of ourselves. Yes, we have gone through enough and more webinars to realize that, yes, that old version of me won't work. Now, here is my question. And that's, that's what, uh, you know, I would love to listen to you. How do you sell your narrative to the skeptical mind? I understand that, yes, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's a bit like, um, you know, I keep giving that example that nobody asked for a glass-covered phone, okay? But, but when he did make it, uh, he created a need for it, all right? He, 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 he created a narrative for it. So what was the narrative that you as DBS Bank and you as a banking professional who has had an analog history, what was that story, what was the narrative that you created which helped you even reach out? Because you are, you are a fully functional, uh, uh, you know, a, a bank which is doing well even before this need has come up at, of this period. So it's a, it's a, it's a lovely question. Uh, I'll, I'll, give, I'll answer this slightly differently. If you look at Apple, uh, hmm. you know, as you said, the glass-covered phone, right? When Apple launched the iPod, right, iPod, uh, 
the music player was always available but the concept of ipod was to change the industry the way you think and it was hinging on what is called the core experience the concept was carry 1000 1000 songs your favorite songs in your pocket right that was the narrative but mm. you know actually the, the thing is narratives alone don't work narratives have to be you know combined with great customer experience yeah. and if you have to get the experience right despite having the best of narratives your goal will fail you'll not be able to you will not be able to create that impact in life mm. for us when we came came into this you know into this phase our objective was to change the industry the way customers or people looked at banks the way customers engage with banks and we said we want to become uh, you know so differentiated where we say that look we create a platform which is driven by technology the narrative is you are in control mm-hmm. technology in your hand the bank is in your pocket you are in control in whatever you want to do we then leverage and, the and in a time where when you want to do it that's right that's so right. you don't have to you don't have to skip from this and i i need to go to the bank is that's right that's give right give me a minute i need to go to my bank it's like right. that that's yeah. right that's right and then we yeah, you know we also put on top of that great customer experience we spend a lot of time trying to understand you know how do you understand it by talking to clients we talking mm-hmm. to prospects and we we took customers from all kinds of age all age groups different places because you know uh, india being india the size of the country the, the the kind of preferences that you see in north of india is quite different from the kind of people you see in south of india so we said let's capture let's try and understand what is the best journey for a client because the narrative was very strong if the journey is good then the experience is nice and when the experience is nice that's when you start believing in the story because the skepticism goes away when you see things happen i can keep shouting from the top of the roof saying that oh we have built this bank which is very different and you know but when a client customer logs in or downloads the app first of all the bank became an app so you download the app open the account instantaneously and then start doing it and you say wow is it that simple unbelievable so narrative with great customer experience and finally you know the the ability to for customers to actually uh, see how the entire thing works i think that was the real difference and, and, and so so this is a this is a uh, this is such a valid point and again you know, there is a uh, there's a very interesting part of the in the first launch of uh, uh, the apple phone and when steve jobs said that when he gave gave an interface the older interface with the plastic uh, keys yeah. Correct. and he says they can only do what they are supposed to do what they been you know like what they are supposed to do but right. here we can change it so consider for uh, you know for me as i as i listen to you and as i listen to the possibilities of uh, when this entire when the entire real estate of this phone can do many things not right. just that this is only for this and this is only for screen so consider as part of the custom, customer experience how important is it for for a bank or any organization to be even robust in repurposing the offering not just the not just the interface but also the final offering for the customer because the customer is not just saying that okay i can do it from the with the, with, with over my phone but what can i get would you like to share that how that robust change in the possibilities that that the customer can get and and you did mention something very interesting about the bundle and the and the deal yeah i think i think yeah that's so let me explain that uh, you know what what we did was uh we said we'll create bankers out of customers can you can you please repeat that we said we we'll create? create bankers out of customers bankers are typically you know the, the the word banking and the whole concept of banking is quite complex I mean, that's what people think right so we said mm. let's demystify banking and let customers become bankers right so let the not- customers become bankers their own bankers right this is a platform which lets you do everything right on your own so do it yourself you're your own banker the bank travels in your pocket all the time what we did understand while we were thinking on those lines is that you have to demystify the products also so as a bank you know every you if you see it in the history of banking it's always about products 
we converted that we changed that and said the narrative has to be different the purpose is different it's not about the product it's about the need now when you understand the customer need then you can provide solutions that the customer wants right the fact is it's not about having all the products so when you spoke about they gave that example of having plastic keys and you know, so that was the experience part right so i gave a wonderful experience as i said that was done but yeah. as you get in you start seeing that look this is quite easy which means that i can do it myself i think that was the the other powerful thing and that's where that's where we are right now and that's what's driving us as we move forward how do you continuously differentiate this because you know the good news is ashish that needs are never constant the needs keep changing yes yes with people, with age how do you make sure that you live the life cycle of a customer 50 years in his pocket without worrying about it you know i you know you you raised such a beautiful point and you said it so uh, differently from how i so just to let you know you know like uh, what we are doing right now we are d- d- doing it over something called a stream yard and i'm kind of managing and there's uh, there's my associate who's there but there are a whole lot of these things are available to me you know what technology has done shantanu it has allowed me the power that i can you know it's it, it's freeing it's freeing as as a, as a client as as me um as somebody who's expressing myself now it is some not something let me wait for someone let me let me go and meet somebody can somebody come and no i can do it here and and i'm getting a sense when you said that can the customer become the banker wow because that's what technology has has done to people like us we may not have been very good at math but the best of the algorithms we can make work for us and i think that's that's what that's beautiful and and, uh, and and then what you were talking about the 360 impact that a person can make on their own life in in terms of the choices correct actually absolutely so this 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 word that you uh, that you are expressing which is liberation yes. you're liber- you're freeing freeing customers and their minds about the complexity of bank the fact that most people think that oh it's it's a diff- i have to go there i have to talk to somebody i may not understand what he or she is saying that is is uh, sometimes quite you know quite uh, scary right daunting. quite daunting quite intimidating yeah. right absolutely when you liberate that mind and say listen you don't have to do all that it's all there in your hand and it's easy and simple so whatever you want and you know interestingly it is quite engaging it talks to you and it it's it's engaging with with the customer so it therefore makes it that much more easier so when i said you know it helps customers to become bankers they understand what is banking much better and they can do their transaction themselves so you don't need of course there are customers and there are needs which are far more uh, you know complex yes those are different but you know the rest and so, is- so here is my question yeah. i get it that this and 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 i'm just i'm i'm taking it even beyond the purview of this banking uh, you know apparatus now imagine technology is talking to us all right helping us through but can technology can this digital interface be also listening to what i want and and this is something which probably organizations even beyond banking would want to know that yes it is making it but is it also listening to what i want which you know i mean like for example you did uh, you did uh, begin at the earlier point of your career you were uh, uh, you you were responsible for customer relations right you were yes. uh, 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 what is that called a relationship yeah. manager okay yeah. and and the relationship manager was listening was a person who was listening to the client yes all right and and what was it then what was listening then and how is it how was listening now yes i think it's a great question so you know two decades back relationship management was all about listening to customers and trying to find patterns of customer behavior customer needs customer preferences right so one of the things that we always try to focus on is what would ashish like so you know there were uh, some interesting example so one sec this is this is this is gold you know uh, shantanu you kind of you are you are throwing some very interesting gold what you said is very interesting what you said is that a good relationship manager in the past was also able to listen to the pattern of the customer's need yes So I mean yes. that's that's really a nugget for any one of us who are listening to people in our work. We are not just listening to what that person is saying now, 
but yes. we probably possibly have notes of what yes. that person spoke and asked for some time yes. back. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah, yes. please go on. So, yeah. So we were taught that if you are talking to a customer, if you are doing most of the talking, you're not doing a good job. Mm. When you are with a customer, if the customer is talking, so if I am with you, Ashish, if you are talking more than me, I'm doing mm. a great job. I'm listening. The idea of listening is to pick up preferences, observe customer choices, and therefore plan how the entire relationship would work going forward. That was the that was the and that was what we used to focus on. And by the way, the listening part has not changed even today. Okay. Even today, when our, when our relationship managers go and talk to customers, I we encourage them to do the same thing. The only thing that has changed in the last two decades is technology. What has happened is, with technology, you have access to data. Okay. And data is very, very, very powerful. If you can, if you imagine a situation where you have a relationship manager today, who has the power of, you know, a platform which continuously understands the reach, the data of customer transaction behavior, and everything together, mm -hmm. and then comes up with recommendations for the relationship manager to talk to. What have you done? You've empowered the relationship manager and taken him or her to a completely different level altogether. Which, by the way, two decades back, we did not have that expertise. So we, you know, you can't go through rims and rims of data yourself. Yes, of course, if there's a specific issue, you had to. But on a normal environment, you went with your last conversation, last two conversations, maybe, sure. right? And you made your notes. Or your and memory. Or, or your, your memory. memory. Yeah, I, I think you said this. Yeah, but we, you know, we were taught that be memory independent always. So carry your mm -hmm. notebook, yep. make a note, and say, this is what, Ashish, this is what we discussed last time. Mm -hmm. So client connected better. Imagine I tell you, this is the last 30 conversations that we did with you. Wow. Technology can do that. Yes, it can. So our relationship managers today are far more empowered. And that's one of the goals that we are setting for ourselves, that how mm -hmm. can we make our relationship managers even better? How we can make them leverage the power of data, leverage the power of technology and create mm -hmm. more value and serve our customers even better. Our objective is just for that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the, and this is this is so interesting. You know, this is you just brought the KYC. Yeah. Know your customer or client it's, it's really great. to yes, to, to another level. Because I recall um Mr. Jan, who kind of came over to my house uh, uh, you know, I think 20 years back and, and Arth was just born and yeah. that was the first time I experienced what, uh, what a banker would listen to when I asked for something and he was with a Citibank and then, then he listened and he told me that, look, in so many years, you may need this. And, and possibly I told him that I love to travel. And then he said, okay, that, so, you know, I experienced somebody hearing me and, and, uh, you know, over the last few years, as I've been interacting with quite a few, uh, you know, through banking assignments, also through my workshops, one thing which I got is that the KYC, it's its not just have you have have you put in your Aadhaar card and have you put in your PAN number and the address, but it's actually knowing your customer. What is what are their pain points? And and let's look at it in terms of any business, uh, Shantanu, how important it is to go beyond the obvious that even this person is stating. How important is it for a professional to look 360 at something which even I am not looking at? So I am looking at you, but you can see this, this part of my blind spot. But you as a professional with now, you're privy to certain patterns and you're also privy to things that are happening around. How much does it actually improve my experience without even letting me know that how much you're adding to me? Significantly. Yeah. Significantly. You see, the point is when you... So banking is all about trust, Ashish. Ashish. Yeah. When you know that you can trust your relationship manager to know things that you don't remember always, you know that this is the guy I'll never leave. The other thing that I want to talk about here, and I, I could not touch up, I couldn't talk about it earlier, is that what about the word consistency? So mm. I was a relationship manager, I listen to customers more. My next relationship manager, did you do the same thing? I said, if I were to ask you, your first relationship manager, your second relationship manager, your third banker, there are a host of people. People are different, right? Their approaches are different. 
technology helps you build consistency. Ah. Yes, consistency in the way you serve, being able to build trust, the ability that the customer knows that irrespective of banker one or banker two, my bank knows what I need. Got it. These are very powerful things, and that's I think that's how we differentiate as we go forward. We have to make sure in an environment that we live in, which is complex, which is fast-paced. How can we simplify his life? So lifestyle and, and 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 so when you said simplify life, I, I mean, if I may, if I may just ask, in terms of simplification, of see, for example, I'm speaking to a professional. Okay, so that's not my profession. And Shailendra Jain, you know, when he was with City, uh, when he came and uh, met me years back, and and he's now moved. He's more moved to another. But you are absolutely right. That experience that he gave me, it's it has stayed with me. Because he's yeah. the person who guided me, that human being, that banker, you know, yeah. who he is, has, has stood by me. So here is a question that very clearly I, as a customer, remember people who I have experienced thought for me. Yes. Well, it's purely my point. I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm just saying that gave me a great experience. So my question here is that with increasing digitization of not just and the digital thing happening not just in banking but everywhere bots are going to play a big role right where is that where is that person who's going to be probably even empathetic to me and not give me the regular answers which bots give yeah See, the, the, the emergence of bots is a different very interesting subject altogether but you know mm -hmm. We realize that you know you can't have access to a relationship manager twenty four seven, right? Yes. But you can have access to a personal assistant twenty four seven. Now, a personal assistant has has multiple roles to play. So, for example, if you have an assistant, he or she can help you do one, two, three, four things, right? But one is the experience, and two is if you ask something, you get a response, right? So mm -hmm. we built a bot in our in the in the platform, the the app that we have, which answers all your questions. I want to do this. How do I do this? All those hows are all answered there. But right. we realized that that's the first phase. And while we launched the bot, we were the first to launch the bot in India in the app. Okay. And 80, wow. 80 percent of our customer queries were handled by the bot itself. However, we realized this just having a bot which answers your questions is not good enough. You also need to have a bot which can, which understands you and makes recommendations, which can help you and with a with a conversation, it guides you on a conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so the bot plays a very interesting role. And while I I, I must I must share this that the, the the warmth of a human touch cannot be replaced by anything. That always remains. I, I can assure you, you know, as we become more and more digital, I'm not saying that our the, the human touch will become completely will go away. No, it's not going to be that. People do feel that warmth, and they want to feel that warmth. But they also believe that most of the stuff should happen automatically. Yeah. Uh, things which can which can happen naturally should happen naturally. Yeah. I think a combination of these two is a very powerful tool of having the, the warmth of whenever it's required, whenever it's required, knowing that there is an assurance. Assurance is very important, by the way. The trust and assurance that, mm -hmm. oh, Absolutely. I know he's there. I know she's there. I know the bank is there. And yeah. assurance is very important. But I don't need to go there every time. I can get yeah. it done myself. And God forbid, if there's a problem, then I will reach out. Otherwise, I don't need to. Now comes my day-to-day -day needs. You know, the other thing that we're really trying to change in our in customer's life is how do we become a bank which is completely part of your everyday life? So it's called everyday banking. Okay. Right? Every day, in, you know, if you look, thought about it before the, before the lockdowns happened, from the time you got up till the time you went to sleep, you do so much of stuff. Right? Yeah. Is it possible to simplify and lev use technology to do that? I mean, for simple things like, oh, I need to buy this so and so time, or I need to wish so and so and so, right? Or I need to make that payment, right? Now, in your fast paced life, you are hoping that somebody will either remind you or you're putting your reminders on your phone, right? Well, here is a bank which tells you to do all that. Right? It tells mm -hmm. you it's, it's, it's simplifying things. So I think sure. the concept of Becoming a bank which is gradually invisible, it's part of your life all the time, but need not be on your face all the time. It's accessible when you want. It also has a human touch. It's the ultimate journey that we're looking at. 
Fantastic. So, so here is something which now, now the, so I'm also looking at it across, you know, people who are not even involved in organization, which is not involved in banking. Now consider a, you're talking of the customer experience, the ease that for my day to day thing, something is taking care of it. But for that critical, uh, critical suggestion for me, there will be a human being who will suggest, okay, Hey, listen, can you try this out now for that? You did mention during our curation call something very interesting called the bundle or the or, or what's the what's the deal? Can you can you take 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 us through that? Because that I found is very interesting because it really allowed me to know that I did not just take one thing. I I should be suggested that what can I take along with this to take care of few things. Now, which is true in any uh, interaction that only one thing may not work for me. But what works with what, that is somewhere even the trust will come into play. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, ability to be able to understand what the customer needs is very important. Uh, you know, I think the, the, the other big differentiation that we are trying to create is that you take be a step ahead of really what the needs are. So I am traveling. So Ashish, you are traveling. And you said, I have to book a ticket, which is very easy, right? Mm. Okay. Or uh, for example, you want to buy a house, take a loan. Very simple. As I said in the beginning, in the beginning of the conversation, we have moved away from products into customer needs. Now, who is thinking when a client is buying a loan? Hey, are you taking an insurance for yourself along with that? Are you taking a you know a protection along with that? Mm -hmm. Are you taking, so? What you come to, or for example, when you're traveling, you're traveling and you're thinking, okay, I'm going to go from here to there, and that's it. Have you bought a? Uh, you know, have you thought about if you miss the flight? What if the flight gets canceled? What happens then, right? Now, those are things that we are thinking. May, the customer may miss it. So when there is a, so this is the bundling that I was talking about. How you create a experience where you are a step ahead. So when you're buying a ticket, imagine the, you know, the, the, the bank telling you, actually, why don't you just take this along with it? So that if there is a, you know, if, if the flights get canceled, the money, the refund is in your account instantaneously, or you know, in a, in a matter of an art. But that is that is very, very good news, right? Also the yeah. fact that if you lose your baggage, for example, or mm -hmm. something like that, right? So we we thought that look, it's not just about one product. We have to get away from talking products with customers. We have to get into talking needs with customers. Ah. And I do that, you know, you try and multiply your products. When I say multiply, you you know add them together, stack it up in such a manner that it gives you a 360 degree solution. Enjoy. Sure. sure. And, and and probably this is where the insight of the professional will come into play. True. Absolutely. Insight yeah. which would which would uh, uh, you know illuminate certain things for me, but as I said, in even in areas which I can't see. Yes. And, and so here is the tricky one, and something which I wish to ask. All organizations, every organization which wants to offer something is met with another side of uh, kind of skepticism where people say, oh, so you want to sell something else to me. All right. Until there is a point, for example, when you go to a doctor of the, of the, your, you know, you kind of, if the doctor said, do this, you would do this. But there is an amount of uh, doubt which creeps in. And there is a, a, what should I say, a dilution of trust which comes in, especially when people say that, oh, yeah, they're, they're going to try to sell another thing to me, sell another thing to me. How do you as a professional, what is it about you which will allow the, the customer who's not even now meeting you, just has an online relationship with you? How does the element of trust and, and, and what is the role? How do you manage it? How do you manage trust for people to have trust? So the first thing about trust is to be able to deliver what, what you say. It's, yeah. it's about your promise. If you if you make a promise, then you better better well deliver it every no time. No question about that. No question no. about that. Yeah. The moment you but, start delivering it every time, mm -hmm. customers start getting trust, starts building the trust. Then trust. on top of that becomes hygiene, by the way, Ashish, that if I need something, it gets done. Then you take it to the next level, which is, can I add more value to him? For example, I have got a health, I work for a company. I'm a salaried individual. 
I work for a company. I know I have a health insurance policy from the company itself. Mm-hmm. The bank suddenly one day reminded me that Ashish, you're working here. Do you think you want to take a switch, a policy which switches on and switches off on its own, depending on what you want? For example, you have a health insurance policy with a, with your existing company, right? Mm-hmm. But here is a policy which which rides over and above that, and it switches off when you are in the company. But have you thought about it when you change jobs? What happens then? What who covers you then? Then you are scampering here and there trying to look for a policy. This is the time when you can switch it on. So let me let me again demystify it. So one is delivering on your promise every time. Got That's it. how that builds trust. Then you add start adding value to his life. Which people experience. Which people experience. Correct. Correct. And remember, I don't say this to everybody. I say this to the people who, which is relevant. So it is contextual. It is driven by customer insight. What does he want? Has he bought a policy? Can I create that? So that insight is very important. So when you build that, so core delivery of transaction, then insights, and then experience. You don't need to worry about a customer and sell a product. We are looking at a lifetime journey. So that's how we are thinking. We are not looking at, oh, if I get a customer today, I need to sell him this product. That's never the objective anymore. And technology helps us create that. So when you are in charge, when you are on in control, the power is in your hand. You choose what you want. It's our job to facilitate. It's our job to tell you what you might what might be relevant to you. So we have taken this whole piece around trying to push a product to a customer. We are no more bankers who is trying to sell products. That's the differentiation that we have brought brought in in the in the entire journey. So if we can just slightly uh, you know switch and slightly move. Elsewhere, so so we are we are in some very interesting times, uh, okay. Shantanu, where there is there's a lot of upheaval happening. Upheaval, a whole lot of upheaval is happening outside, and a whole lot here. In this period where people are actually feeling scared, and scared is not just for life, it's also for life, but also for livelihood. All right. So in in this entire thing, which you as a leader, as you're interacting with people in your life, which is both within and outside, what is it that one thing which which you share, which you talk of, which allows people probably, you know, because as I see it, as long as we can allow people to have faith and trust in humanity and the ability are our ability to bounce back, something is possible. What is it? How do you go about it, Shantanu? I think very simply, uh, Ashish, a sense of purpose with a lot of gratitude. Sense of purpose with a lot of gratitude. As a leader, it's my job to make sure that my team and the organization that I'm part of, we continue to focus on our purpose. And our purpose is to do good for our customers. Our purpose is to make sure we, we, we solve problems, to do to contribute in a positive way. And when you talk about what's happened outside in the last four months and the, the kind of you know challenges all of us have gone through, it's important to be grateful and be grateful for what you have and who you have around you. I am fortunate to have a fabulous, phenomenal group of people who are part of my team who are continuously thinking on those lines, right? We are really charged up. We know these are difficult times, but these are the times that we have to work the hardest. In the last four months, we have really, really worked very hard to make sure that we protect the customer's interest. We create a platform which is even stronger. The security of the platforms are very robust. Customer needs are always met. Never a time that we dropped a customer request or transaction. And that comes from a sense of purpose, that we are a company, we are a team, which is very clear about how we want to serve our customers. So for and how do you, and what do you what do you tell to the what do you tell to anyone here uh, yeah. who is you know what is your take on? I mean, I I found this very powerful when you said that if we if we keep our purpose in place, all right, and we really get that because purpose is that is, is your pole star, yes, you know, which is there, all right. right. It's it's kind of yes, there are storms and there are things, but yes. 
you know, I, I personally do believe that storms don't last and dreams don't perish sure. and, and your pole star doesn't waver. Right. So uh, what would you share to people at large as to um, in this period where people are feeling a pinch uh, in their pockets, uh, which leads to fear? What would you share to them? I think uh, I would just tell them that believe in yourself. Hang in there. Because, you know, different difficult times, good times, they're two different parts of the same coin, right? This is a this has been a very, very difficult period, right? Quite unprecedented because we've no nobody even thought about this for four months back. But if your belief continues to be strong, and if your purpose is always at the core, your your North Star, as you said it so nicely, mm -hmm. then nothing can it's an unwavering focus on what you want to do forever, yeah. irrespective of what happens. So it, during difficult times, if you can hold on to that thought, that belief, then... And, 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 and here is... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And here is one thought. I'm mean, just to take this thing ahead. Have you ever considered, uh, Shantanu, that whenever there is... Whenever we feel the pressure, whenever we feel kind of that, you know, that, that push or... We have a choice. We may either wait or we may create something new. Absolutely. You know, it's it's the speed it kind of it kind of allows you to even maybe forces you to break out of that inertia, uh, which was which had probably set in. So even though you were you were always considered bright, you know, you were considered uh, really this thing. And in this moment, when the scenario suddenly changed, how does how does Shantanu at this point what what stops Shantanu from wilting and how how would Shantanu move forward and how does he move forward? I think it's 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 my uh, eternal optimism that in life there's always a there's something good in what we do, right? Uh, uh, when you fail, there's something good in that failure, right? You keep trying, you don't give up, and that's you know I think the the best example of that is what you teach your own children. And when I talk to my team in, my, in, the, in the office, my team knows this. Everybody will talk about the fact that uh, when boss talks about it, he talks about just one thing. Just make sure you don't give up. It, this, as long as we believe in ourselves, as long as we know that it's going to, it's going to pass, it's going to, it is going to happen. We have to face this. You can't wilt under the pressure. We have to face this. It's going to be tough. But you emerge much more stronger. This is transformational for us. And the people who come out stronger are the people who are winners in life. This is about winning in life. Right? And this is and that's why it's important to keep your mind very clear about how you're approaching this life, this phase of your life. You can't allow, you know, despite all the negative energy around, you ca cannot allow that to come and creep in. It cannot allow you to become weak. You got to stay focused. And that's why I think the sense of purpose is very important. I am focused. I am looking there. That is it. Despite the distraction, you will not be able to take my eyes off the ball. I will still be able This yeah. is fan fantastic. And in fact, I mean, now let's just look at the other side of it. For me, um, as much as I look at it, you know, this period has fast forwarded so many things which we would have earlier just a few months back said, yeah, I'll, yeah, complete digitization will... Yeah, it'll take time. But yes, a whole lot of this country is going to be missing out on a whole because they don't have that uh, broadband connectivity. They don't probably have that kind of electricity that, that is needed for that. But do you think that this is really a sharp, not really wanted, but since it has happened, it is a, a tight, uh, you know, smarting thing on our back to really get used to these new things and spread it, spread this digital possibility faster than we ever thought that we could. Has this, has this fast forwarded it? Absolutely. And it would. And it is, and the other good news is, Ashit, it is not temporary. It yeah. is permanent. Right? And I think what the, the world is looking at is governance and how governments and governance and leadership is showing up in terms of the steps being taken to fast forward and accelerate lives, right? Accelerate this, this journey. 
Yeah, so you mean this this rubber band which got pulled, you don't see it coming back again. You no, do I see don't. that there will be a learning in this. Of course. Of and course. beyond. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is so, not, not a temporary. Yeah, yeah, please go on. Please go on. Please go on. Yeah. So, so what, what I meant, in fact, is that the repercussions of this period, do you, how do you see this? Because, see, you were, you, were, you were leading the curve. You were extremely, you know, you were at the, at the forefront of digital transformation. But now other organizations are also kind of now getting there because, you know, uh, reasons, you know, obvious reasons, they are getting there. What does a leader do now? A leader whose USP was the digital piece. Now everybody is going to be part of it, and now, now what does this leader do? Well, he, the leader continues to think about the customer. Th that doesn't change, whether you're mm -hmm. digital or physical. As long as you keep your eyes on our customer and his needs, and to to be able to delight him, to be able to take care of his, you know, uh, the, the the aspects of banking that he's looking for, nothing changes. No, the thing that has changed is the analog, in in or the more physical engagement has become digital, but everybody is becoming digital. So how do you differentiate? You continuously yes. differentiate through data, insights, how customers are behaving, how customers are thinking, and how do you take that experience to a different level? And I think today with technology available and with 5G coming in, which is, a, which is going to take us to a completely different environment, the power of recommendation, the power of using insights will differentiate the best banks from the rest of the banks. And the best banks will actually use that data and insight. No, it's no more just data, by the way, Ashish. It's data and insight, right? A certain how pattern. Is, how is it data. going to be in? Yes, how is it going to be used and applied? Correct, correct. The not pattern, just information, because there's inform enough information on the correct. web. You know, we've got everything. But correct. how? So, so here is this part. This innovation, which is kind of, you know, I, I, I see it in the air. Do you think this now seeped into or is seeping into our psyche where we realize that innovation is not just part of an R&D lab. It is individuals who will have that data and what are the things that they suggest? Because, because you know, we at Avid Minor, we continuously are looking at innovating with what we have. You know, so thinking afresh and then finding technology, finding ways to uh, you know, uh, to create something. And, and this is, again, something which, which comes up in my conversation with you, is that when you keep looking at the customer want, does it also interest you? Does it, I mean, in terms of, you know, creativity, does it also interest you to find out what next could the customer want? Oh, of course, of course. That's the whole, you see, today our, uh, our jobs have become so much more exciting because you're right now, so I'll give you some interesting uh, uh, anecdotes. One, you said innovation earlier, about 10 years back, innovation was the icing on the cake. Today, innovation yeah. is the cake itself, right? Which means if I you do that. Okay, so earlier, yeah. innovation was the icing on the cake. Now it's yeah. the cake itself. Correct. And uh -huh. what is innovation for you? The innovation piece is that how can you, become intelligent with the customer, right? Imagine an environment, Ashish, where I am not present with you, but I'm making my presence felt. How am I making my presence felt? I'm making intelligent recommendations. So the data which got converted to insights become the conversation with the customer and a recommendation for him. Imagine your app, your banking, your phone telling you or your bot, tell your assistant telling you, Ashish, you probably need to do this. You would say, wow, how do you know that? That's called the power of, you know, uh, insight driven approach where we moved away from products to insights and from insights to recommendation and from recommendation to becoming contextual and relevant in people's life. For us, I think the core, the core phrase is how can we be relevant for the next 50 years of your life? I don't need to worry about products. I don't need to worry about anything. I just want to be relevant in every day of his life going forward, and that will solve my purpose. And that's so such a powerful thing to say because if we can really see this, whichever trade that we are in, whichever profession that we are in, just the ability to stay relevant is is the name of the game. And I have, uh, it, it, over the course of my life and career, uh, careers. 
I have uh, I have discovered that uh, that as we travel, as we travel through life, uh, you see, as a self-employed person, if I may say that, yeah. uh, there are many alliterations to me. All right, and there are many different forms. And you know, when you mentioned about the bundle, um, it is you know each one of us is a composite of many offerings. And if we can tailor make it, you know, create a bespoke something which is of validity to you, knowing fully well that what is valid for you at this moment uh, will not may not be a few days from now, and is definitely not for someone even right now. So I think that is active living for me, Shantanu. You know, it's active living. It's not just another day at the job. Yes. It, yeah. it is not an SOP which has been put in place then. And, you know, now we just follow it. Yeah. So how important is it for you as a professional, you as a human being, to ongoingly be hawkish at remaining relevant and updated and upskilling yourself wherever you may be? How important is it for you? Oh, it's very important, Ashish. And uh, let me tell you, I uh, once I once I got into this whole, con you know, this 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 theme of building a digital bank, mm. I moved away from being a banker of two decades or two and a half decades to a student of banking. Ah, you know, I, I, I'll give you, and this is I'm saying this not to, you know, I'm being very very honest, and I'm I'm still even today as I speak, I'm a student of this part because mm. this is the fun part of of banking. When you look at you play with data. When you look at data, build algorithms, build models, which create value in customers' lives. That's the fun part of the work. And mm -hmm. when I sit with you know young data scientists, people who are great with data, statistics, they're working on insights, etc. It excites you. When you see the future of banking, and as you said, living forward, what is living forward? Living forward is creating such value for customers, right? And this is not, it's not one-time effort. It is ongoing. Imagine, imagine a customer, Ashish, who starts banking with you at the age of 24, 25. Remains. Remains with you till he's 75. What are you talking about? Sure. You, you're talking about a life cycle. And if you don't have the if you don't have the the, the, the core right of how you want to innovate, how you want to experience. And by the way, nobody has taught us this. We don't know it. Yeah. We're learning it. Every day is a learning, and that's the excitement of the job. That's so when the excitement. Correct. So when I say I am a student, and mm. you know, you get to learn so much every day, mm. and these are not available in standard operating procedures, or it's not available in the manual. Because mm. at this stage of our life, every step we take is new. Yeah, beautifully put. And that, and that step that we take, we take that step with conviction. We take the step with self belief, knowing that this is best for our customer. That's the sense of purpose. Which and, remains consider for a, and consider for a moment that as we step into that new, that new area, if it is made, it is if it is known that we do not know what is going to come up, but we will give it our best to face it and to go beyond. That's right. All right. So, so very clearly, I mean, uh, I, I would know for a fact that you will not be uh, you will not be someone who knows what's going to come up in the future. Okay. But if if teams, if sets of people, and that's why I think the the importance of the team, uh, okay. Shantanu, in this entire piece for whichever organization, you know, wherever we are, the importance of the team is that together we will navigate through this. Yes. All right. So, so here is here is you know one question which came up as we are coming down to the end of it, and this is a uh, interesting one. And uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, Divya. So you know, is it, is Rajiv Narang is asking, how do you build trust in a current scenario when your customers are not doing well? Those you interact with are confused uh, in their decisions and future uncertain about their future as well. What as a partner can one do? It's an interesting one. I would like both of us to take something on this. Um, yeah. So uh, again, an environment that we have not seen in the past, new to us. What can we do? Mm. I think I think at this phase, what we can do is stay close to our customers. There are there are significant challenges in the in the economy. There are mm. challenges outside. You know, we speak about lives, we speak about livelihoods, right? 
people are anxious people are nervous right and i we covered that in the beginning what can yeah. you do in time what we can do we must do all the time which is that as long as from a from a bank perspective we are helping the livelihood base wherever we can <laughs> however way we can i think that that's important so that's mm. one contribution that we have that we do continuously and make sure that our platforms are safe it's secure it's consistent and people have no trouble no anxieties in terms of dealing with us so that's the core yeah so Not here is one thing here is one thing uh, uh, you know shantanu which i kind of you know my, my take on this also is now i i am from this side okay you are from the other side i am from this side one of the things that i have found out is that my anxiety okay my anxiety no one can take away shantanu no one can take away i may be with the most trusted person you know uh, uh, recently a friend of mine was going through some stuff and uh, and he's going through it and and you see the question that is, is am i doing it right okay now that is something and and, and uh, i'm i'm not somebody who's a, a bereft of that you know i am somebody you know who kind of does something and am i doing it right now this keeps coming up and one of the things that i keep telling myself and i keep sharing with others is that it is up to me to really get that any false sense of security if i want for myself is going to be a false sense of security all right for us to really get and, and that's one piece which i liked about uh, what you said is that consider that if you step into that tomorrow knowing fully well that whatever comes i will stick to my commitment i will play and i'll play hard in the direction that i am committed to so so therefore what happens is i do not i do not want somebody allow me to can i trust you you know can i trust you is like a you know can you trust me and i and i keep telling people that that's that's a you're asking for a lie to be told by someone yeah yeah you can trust and nothing's going to happen. of course something can happen and I, i and i think therefore the point of having straight conversations also with people and allowing people to be educated with the fact that look what is happening Uh, there were economists and there were uh, doctors and and you can blame anyone that you could have thought of this before hello yes you could have thought but we did not and and humanity is this this moment has actually said that all the predictive things that we counted a lot on when actual vuca happened it threw vuca of the past uh, you know out of the window so imagine if we as human beings actually now start trusting that today and to be optimistic about our life but not to not to think that all is well everything is fine everything is going well but we really get ready to deal with the storms in our life because this has proven that uh, storms may hit any one of us it has really allowed us to see that life is nashwar the things that we have are nashwar but within that also can we live with belief and with happiness and with trust absolutely absolutely and 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 just to add to what you said uh, ashish mm. you know uh, i don't think it's this side or that side i think we are on your side i think that the side has the the, the boundary of the side has gone away in our mind we don't have bank side and the customer side is only one side the customer side and what we trying to do is not add to the anxiety remember that's yeah. a very really, very important thing ashish right yeah. Imagine, don't act to it. You are, you are anxious about the future. We are all anxious about the future. Yes. Life has changed, right? We are, we are dealing with a new normal. However, is my bank adding more anxiety to me? That's the big question. And if you yes. don't, do that, I think you're doing a fabulous job of, of a bank. Yep, yep, yep. And am I add, adding more anxiety to the world? Correct. And and uh, I, I think that's a that's a fantastic, fantastic, uh, you know, point for us to. kind of culminate this conversation we have kind of uh, easily broken into the uh, past the one hour uh, limit of our conversation and 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 you know i i am you know this beautiful line that you spoke that innovation can we just have that uh, uh, the innovation uh, you know yeah innovation is not the icing but the cake uh, it is not just the icing uh, icing it is the cake uh, and i really uh, take that bit away from this interaction with you uh i can't do today i i really am present to that even though we may have been um leaders at some point we can't sit 
on that, uh, you know, on our past and, and imagine that it's going to carry us through. The point is that if we have been innovate, innovating in the past, it, it, is, it, is, it has to be a present continuous. We have to continue to innovate. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, um, so as, as, as a final bye-bye, what would you like to share with everyone? Uh, I just want to, first of all, thank you for you know, this lovely conversation. But as, as a message to everybody around us, the message that I give to people I love the most, my own children, my family, is that uh, you know, there's no point worrying too much. Because in life, you can, uh, our ability to worry is infinite. Uh -huh. it, just, it, it just pulls us down. right? You can continue to worry till the cows come home. right? But that doesn't solve the problem. So I keep telling people, Keep your sense of purpose intact. Mm -hmm. Keep that as your core. Keep it at the forefront of everything that you do. And you will see we will emerge stronger. And the other part that I want to share with everybody is that please take care of yourself. Okay, this is the time to take care. Because unless you live, you can't have livelihood. And unless you, if you live well, you come out stronger. You have a great life ahead of us. So that's the message I'd like to give to all people who've been listening to us for so long. Fantastic. And on that note, uh, on that note, thank you, Shantanu, for having uh, joined us and shared your thoughts. Um, I promise you one thing, dear friend, uh, whichever profession that we may belong to, whatever, uh, whatever work we do and wherever we live, uh, the human spirit is something which we need to keep rekindling, not just in ourselves, but in others. And when people like you, and I've been interacting with your team members, uh, they speak highly of you uh, in terms of they say that he ignites us each morning, afternoon, and evening. And uh, I, I want to thank you for that because what happens is that as we kindle others, they go out and, and kindle many more. And this period, as you rightfully said, uh, this requires people to light up rather yes. than blow it out. All right? Absolutely. So, uh, so cheers to the human spirit. Cheers to the spirit of possibility because we have survived many and we shall uh, extraordinarily make something interesting out of this. Appreciate it. Thank you all for joining us this Sunday morning. Thank you once again, uh, Shantanu and your entire team for having uh, you know facilitated this. And uh, keep striding, dear friend. And I look forward to meeting you some other weekend talking about what next you have created for your customers and for the world at large. Thank you so much. Thank See you, you all at the next edition of Living Forward and uh, have a great uh, weekend and take care of yourself. Lots of love. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you, everybody. And uh, we'll just say a quick bye to everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>